or tactical team. Hey there guys, this is me, Malorian, and this is going to be another Orc Tactical Team. Now in this one here, we're going to be talking about the CID forum and its process and really what Privateer Press is trying to do with it and why the CID process is the best thing that Privateer Press ever came out with and is also the worst. So let's kind of get into first what this is. The CID forum is the Community Integrated development, something like this. It, it, what this is all about is basically Privateer Press putting out rules and saying, hey, this is what we're thinking of doing. What do you think? Go out there and play test it. Let us know what you think. And we're going to work together to figure out what's the best way to do this. And I mean, to start off with the good side, why is this such an amazing thing for Privateer Press to do? Because it is the perfect link in between the player and the company. So, of course, when the company goes out and they come up with rules and they say, oh, we play tested this, this for three years, okay, this is a very large game with lots of units, with lots of rules, and finding these interactions is extremely difficult. I mean, if you just think of all things out there, if you take one model and say, oh, I'm going to go in and take a look at this guy here, and then realize, like, oh, I'm going to have to look at every single rule and see how it works within my own faction and then I have to see how it works within the other factions and then there's also play styles and how it works with the, the scenarios. It is extremely hard to go and capture everything. So of course when Privateer Press came out and said for Mark III that they play tested this for three years, that was unfortunately a very probably incorrect thing to say. I mean, I'm sure it's correct in, in terms of, yes, they, they probably did do this playtesting for three years, but it, it certainly then puts them at a spot where you assume that those three years, they play tested everything, and that's clearly impossible. You know, in all the different combinations, they can't clearly capture everything, especially in a game that keeps on evolving, right? This is a game where all the time there's new and new and new and stuff, and so stuff you play tested yesterday could be completely invalidated tomorrow when a new thing comes out and completely changes possible interactions. So, as right as they were in saying it, it really kind of shot them in the foot because when things came out saying like, well, this is wrong and this is wrong, and by wrong, I mean so much more uh, broken in, a, in terms of this is too powerful or this is not powerful enough. And when that comes out then, it really looks bad on the company, right? A big thing that Privateer Press has above several other gaming systems is that their gaming system is a lot more balanced. They're not doing these things to try and just sell models. They really do care about their game. They want to put out the most balanced rules possible so that it's competitive and something that players can use to get a fair game out of, right? This is not a game that we're just here to drink beer and throw dice. Sure, we could do that as well. However, we pick War Machine for that competitive advantage. Something that says, hey, we can both try our best and we're not going to just give in to silly loopholes that the company didn't look into. We can both try and do our best and have a nice, whoa, this got a lot brighter, fair game. Now, this is where CID comes in because if they can do their part and say we're going to play test all these things, well, that's all well and good, but you know who's really good at play testing rules and finding all the broken loopholes? The players. The players are great at this. And uh, yeah, if you go out there and you say to players, hey, here you go, here's your stuff, uh, let us know what, what's broken and what's not, in no time. Uh, a series of tournament players can take something new and say, whoa, this looks too powerful, play out, try and make some different combinations, and reply back saying, I don't think you thought about this, you might want to change this. And by working together, Privateer Plus, Press and the players can really deliver a product which is play tested by the company in the way that they feel it's intended and what they feel is going to be seen, and then as well by the players who are able to actually know their own meta and break it their own way that maybe Privateer Press might not even see. So from all that there, CID is amazing. This is the best thing you could possibly do. 
Here's the problem, and there's a couple of them. The first one that we're going to be seeing here is the whole idea that we have these rules, and they're going to be going out for a while as you go and test things. It can get very frustrating for other players. So this is what I mean by this. If I'm going to my general gaming store, and I'm like, I'm going to go and play a game today. Well, if the other person shows up, and they're like, yeah, I've got this CID battle engine I want to use. Well, okay, that's good, I guess, but I know nothing about these trial rules. I mean, we can't assume that every single player out there is staying up to date with all these trial rules. I would say the vast majority of players do not do that. They look at their cards. This is what is it? <laughs> you know, it's probably very difficult for some of them even to keep up on erratas when those happen. And so for trial rules and to be looking at those, I'm sure there's a lot of people that just don't want to have any part of it. They're like, well, no, no, no. Tell me the rules when these come up. Now, the obvious reply to that is like, well, come on. If somebody goes to the store and they want to play with the CID rules, they have to get the okay, right? So it's all happy, happy, happy. Well, the thing is, is that for this to actually work, it has to be played. People have to go and take this, and unless you have a very close-knit group of people, they're like, yeah, we're going to do CID, get all these together, we're going to try all these combinations, that's not happening. I mean, I'm sure in some cases, a few people try and do it, but what's really happening is that there are individuals who are very self-driven and they're gonna be taking these things like I want to try and test this out either for their own gain because like I want to see how broken I can make this or also just because they're just nice people and they want the game to be as balanced as possible and they then have to take this go to their gaming group and try and roll it out and get as many games as can. Either way this game is now being in a spot where when you go to play in a general gaming day, you don't really know what you're going to be playing against. You don't know if you're going to be playing against the standard rules that you see or some sort of trial rules. And with that too, because it goes from week to week to week, are, are we going with week one or a week two? Is there a week three? Where are we with this? And so it can be very difficult to try and keep up with. And in a game where you need to go and analyze and look at every single combination, plan out your pairings, you can cover everything. If all of a sudden you need to go and try and cover things you don't even know what exist or don't know what versions people are going to use, that's extremely, I want to say, you know, it difficult, but it's just also unreasonable. You shouldn't be expecting people to do this. Now, I guess people are going to go and invalidate everything I just said there by saying, like, again, we're supposed to go and players are supposed to agree whenever they do CID, and that's great, but unfortunately, I, I don't think that's how it's coming across, and there's a lot more frustration. So if you're going to go and negate what I just said with that, that's okay, but here's another frustration. We've gone through a couple of CID cycles already. We've gone and done things like Grimkin, we've gone and done the Battle Engines, we've gone and done the Crix Theme Force, and the question is, when are these things going to roll out? Now, I'm pretty sure, like the Grimkin, they're going to come out of lock and load. I suppose the Battle Engines will as well. However, you're left in this weird limbo. You were, you're left in this limbo saying, like, okay, we went through the CID, we went from week to week, now what? <laughs> you don't want to go back and use the original rules because you know those are clearly wrong. They've changed them. However, where do you go? Do you take the last trial rules and kind of run with that? It's almost when you're going from edition to edition. When we went from Mark 2 to Mark 3, there was a huge drop in the people who were interested in playing because they're like, well, we know there's Mark 3. But we don't know exactly what it's going to end up as. We have some teasers of what's in it but we don't know for sure. Meanwhile, we have Mark II. We can play Mark II, we know all the rules for Mark II, but we know that it's not really the game we're gonna be playing in a couple of weeks or something like that, so why even bother? And that's where we had a lot of people saying, well, while I'm waiting for this to happen, I might as well play something else. I'm gonna go play Gill Ball. I'm gonna go play Malifo. And that's happening now. People are leaving and going to do things like 40K, and that is very, very dangerous. So, okay, this is where CID leaves us. CID leaves us in this exact same spot where people are waiting and saying like, well, I have the Steamroller 2017 scenarios. 
I guess I can use them. I don't know if there's going to be any final changes. I don't know what version of Recon they're going to be going with. All I know is that Steamroller 2016 is basically useless to me because we're going to be going here. So any practice I do here is completely useless because we're going to be right here. At the same time, I could play this battle engine. I got, I got one here. I could play this battle engine. However, I know it's vastly underpowered to what it's supposed to be, what it will be. So why would I bother playing this? And if you're someone doing a whole faction, it's like, well, I know that all of a sudden Crix is going to be getting this new theme force. It's going to be very powerful and it's going to let me compete. But what am I supposed to do for now? Am I supposed to not compete? And this is where we get to another issue with the CID in that it's not level. The, the whole idea where CID should really be going after where the game needs improvement doesn't seem to have these linkages right now. It's kind of jumping all over. Now, of course, whenever you're rolling something out like a steamroller package, that's for everybody. When they brought out, and they did a battle engine, where are you? Right here. That's for everyone, because you can do everyone's battle engine at the same time. However, they have to pick and choose where they're going to go. And you'd assume that they're going to go to two areas. They're going to go, well, let's say three areas. They're going to go to stuff that's too strong and they want to modify. They're going to go to stuff that's too weak and they want to improve. And three, they want to go to stuff that's new, that they really want to gauge where exactly is this at. And right now, it's not really following a process that you would think. I mean, we jump to some things, say like, okay, we got this new Crix theme force. Okay, great. But then all of a sudden recently we jumped to Signar and we're doing the Signar theme force for trenchers. And it's like, well, Signar already has three, three theme forces. Do we really need another one? There's a lot of other factions that have just one and they're really in a rough spot. They could really do some with some help. No, we're going to do Signar. Okay, let's, let's do Signar. And then when we start getting into this, we start doing this trencher theme force where there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of new units you got to be left saying, like, well, why Signar? You know, you look at guys like Scorn or Trollbloods and, or maybe Minions and be like, they could really use some real help. You know, if all of a sudden, you know, any one of those factions is really not being played very much right now and having a hard time competing, if they got a new theme force with all those new models and units like we're seeing for the new Signar one, wow, that would be a huge improvement to the game. But right now, it's almost like just this Christmas for the 1% the to make them even better. Now, for Privateer Press's part, I understand that they have a long-term strategy, right? It's not like this is their only vision. Okay, we're doing Signar now. They have a long-term plan. They know that we're going to be rolling out this and this and this and this. In the future, they're already planning out rules for this and this and this. And so where we're looking right now for the Signar theme force that's coming out and all their units is a small snapshot in everything that they have planned. So you have to give Privateer Press the credit for that. At the same time, you have to question their priorities and the way that they're doing this, right? Why are you doing Signar when someone like Scorn or Trollbloods or Minions could really use the help? You really, all of, of Hordes is really in a hard spot right now. Is it because something coming out then for that stuff can only be countered by a trencher theme and so we need the trencher theme to balance everything in the, in the future maybe but highly unlikely so what this really leads to and again i, I can only go so far with this because it's private your press's plan and all i can do is guess but where we're left is the confusement, the, the wonderment of where they're going and why. And with this too, when we're on Signar saying, okay, we got this new theme, let's try it. Oh, you want to talk about Hunters too? You want to talk about Jeremiah Cray? Okay, I, I guess we can, but why? You know, some people are already playing Cray. What about Constance? Nobody's playing Constance. How about we look at her, right? Or again, why don't we jump over to somebody else's faction where they really need some attention and help and try and share the love. And it's just one of those things where when you combine all these pieces together, the you know, where you, you don't really feel it's worth doing because, you know, it's not really 
there yet and you don't know which one to use when you have the whole thing there where okay something's out and we're done and it's not rolled out right away so then now you're wondering what to use and then also this direction where it seems to be bouncing around is really causing a lot of frustration in players and that's why this is a huge time where a lot of players are going over to other systems and I hate seeing it this is such a great system for privateer press to be rolling out but it's almost stabbing them at the same time, right? It's this double-edged sword saying, ha-ha, this is amazing, and it's cutting into my spleen. And it's so hard to see. So I can go on and I can say how it's bad. How would I fix it? How would I take what they have right now and make it better? Number one, we need to go and have a faster turnaround on these CID cycles. Do not start the next cycle until the current one is complete. And what I mean by that is this. Bring something into the cycle. We want to look at this. Propose something. These are the rules you want to test. Do that for one week. Second week, we got your input. We now feel it should be this. Any last thoughts? Test, test, test. One more week, modify. Week three, roll out. That should be enough to be done. And I'm sure there'll be some cases where there's something that's really interesting and maybe in at week two they're like, oh wow, we didn't catch this. We gotta really do something serious. But really, it's not like we should be the first pass. These things should be tested internally and then we're the second pass. So the idea where we should be going through a week one, a week two, silence should not be happening. It doesn't make us feel like the work we're doing is worthwhile. So roll it out. If we've gone through the work, you've gone through the work, get it out there. You know, especially in a world where we're not doing cards anymore and we're doing war room updates, I, I cannot see why it takes more than 48 hours to put in the code to update the numbers or whatever else you need to do to update war room. And then all of a sudden that's done. All right, three week thing done. Boom, we're on to the next one. Week one, roll out. Week two, slight changes. Okay, week three, roll out. And just keep these things going. Second thing I do, you need to stop. You need to stop and say, this is a lot of changes. People are going to be taking on with a lot of things. We need to make sure the message comes out that we have a priority list. And we're going to be doing this for what is key for the game. It's not like trenchers are cool, let's do trenchers. It's like, no, we're going to look at this and we need to roll this out because these things are all brand new. And maybe that's the thing with trenchers. We want to roll this out because all these things are new. However, is that a higher priority than something, something like one of the factions who are really struggling? Or is it a higher priority than some of the top factions and some of their best choices, which is right now heavily skewing the game? And so if they could go through and they could almost have a list, I believe that they should actually make this public and say, all right, this is what we're doing right now. We're going to be doing this. And then we're going to be looking at this next. And then this is next. And then you can look at it and go like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And then that means that when you're sitting here right now as a scorn player and saying, hey, what up on us? Why are you looking at Signar so much? You could look at their schedule and say, oh, we're next. Okay, this thing, you want to get these models out right away and be honest about that. And we're next because we really need to help. Okay, that's fantastic. I understand there'll be a few things to that you'll need to want to protect because if you're rolling out something brand new and it's like, hey, we're going to be doing CID on Siege 3 or like, you know, we know Siege 2 is coming out, right? Uh, so let's give a better example. Morgul 4 or, you know, uh, Father 2, whatever it is. If it, you see that on a schedule, you'll be like, oh, wow, and that might be released sooner than they want. Even that, if that's really your concern, if you're doing a schedule three out, right? So we're talking nine weeks ahead, that doesn't seem too much. If we're doing something which is gonna be five series out, so five times three weeks, 15 weeks out, that doesn't seem like it's too much either. In fact, you could be using that to help kind of go and splash out those spoilers to the community. Like, hey, here's our update schedule and look who's on that, it's, Darius too, right? And all of a sudden this gets huge. Although again, it should be more so like we're going to be looking at Constance and people will be like, oh yeah, because she sucks. And it would make a lot more sense. So that's where we're sitting with this. And I, and I really want everyone to kind of understand 
from both sides. Because there's people out there who are like, CID is ridiculous, I'm getting out of here. And I need this message to go out to them to say like, CID is actually extremely important and extremely good. It is so close to being rolled out in a way that is amazing. Most other game companies don't do this. They say like, hey, we're doing this, Pleh. this is yours, deal with it. Whether they're trying to sell models or whether they're just following their own whims, that's it. Boom, there's your rules, deal with it. Privateer Press is having the humility and the foresight to say like, hey gamers, let's work together. And this is awesome. So we really want to support this. On the other side, we just have to realize that some of the ways this is being rolled out is really not helping things. And if we can go and look at both sides and try and find some middle ground and maybe using the two ideas I had to improve it or maybe something else, this could be a very wonderful system that pulls everyone back together. So anyway, guys, there you go. This is my Orc Tactical team. Please, whatever your thoughts are, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, please put it down below. And otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye.